Hello everyone, this is Daniel Chris from Priest of Facts. This is Priest of Facts Special Episode number 159. We're going to be talking about a prehistoric mammal predator, and that mammal predator is Panthera atrox. And so this is what, so this is the Latin name. This is the Latin or Greek name of this animal. And so this is a possibility of what uh, Panthera atrox would have looked like. It's just a guess, you know, it's a guess of what they probably look like. Some information about a Panthera atrox. The uh, common the uh, the English name for uh, Panthera atrox is the American lion. The American lion it can weigh it can actually be in length of five to eight feet long, approximately one and a half to two and a half meters height, four to five feet, which is one point two to one point five meters. Weigh five hundred to eleven hundred pounds. That's a pretty heavy uh, cat to say the least. It lived. 340,000 to 11,000 years ago in the Pleistocene Epoch. The majority of the fossils are actually found in North America, all the way from Alaska to uh, Mexico. There have been American li there has been some American lion fossils found in South America. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the person that described uh, the American lion in by scientific paper is Joseph Leidy in 1853. So on the left there is the map of North America. So majority, so all the fossils of the American lion are found from Alaska all the way down to New, to Mexico. So you have a lot. You have some fossils that are actually found in, in pretty much in this part of North America. Now they did probably get into the eastern part of North America, but a lot of the fossils are mostly in western North America. And here's a size chart of the American lion. It's a pretty big cat if you actually think about it. It's a pretty big cat. And here's a skeleton of the American lion. This is a skeleton that was actually found in the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, California. So there has been, there's not that many, there's not that many American lion uh, fossils in the La Brea tar pits. There's been over 30 uh, American lions that have been found in the La Brea tar pits. So they probably didn't get stuck into the tar, into the tar that much. More information about uh, Panthera atrox. It belongs to the Philidae, so the cat family. It is one of the largest cats to live on Earth's history. And, and so it's a pretty big cat. Um, and so it is larger than Smilodon. Uh, Fatalis, which is the super tooth cat in North America. So it's larger than Smilodon Fatalis. And, uh, and it's, it's a pretty big uh, cat, but in terms of uh, Smilodon Populator, uh, they're pretty even in size, so it's pretty, pretty close. And of course, the American lions got close cousins in Asia and Europe, so cave lions, so its closest relatives are cave lions from Asia and Europe. So probably its ancestors, so probably the uh, ancestors of, or the predecessors of the American lion migrated over to North America and actually became the American lion. And of course, American lion, like all cats, they're ambush predators. They're ambush predators. They are not built to uh, chase after their prey for long distances. They're not like cheetahs. So they're actually going to be uh, ambush predators because if you look at their skeletons, they're actually built like really stocky, really strong cats. And of course, they actually have a very strong bite, which like a lot of most uh, big cats do today. Uh, cheetahs don't really have that very much of a powerful bite. Uh, their their bite is actually going to be twice the twice twice the strength of an African lion. So it's actually going to be a very strong bite. And like majority of all cats, uh, the American lion has retractable claws. And if you actually look at a skeleton of of the American lion, you're actually going to see these sheaths, bony sheaths, uh, coming co covering these uh, claws. So they have retractable claws, and that's pretty common amongst cats. The environment in the American lion lived in, it was a bit cool and dry. Uh, there was a, lots of trees, lots of grass, flowers, and you, of course you have some rivers and lakes, and other animals that were actually living around there, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and of course mammals. And the mammals that you're going to be very common uh, for the American lion to see is the uh, megafauna, the big the megafauna of the Ice Age. So the prey of the American lion or Panthera atrox. 
uh, its favorite prey is going to be Ice Age bison. So the bison in the Ice Age were actually a little bit larger than the average American bison. And of course, we can hunt camels. There were camels living in North America. Ground sloths uh, you can eat, and mostly eating the juveniles or otherwise the carrion, the de a dead one. Uh, mastodons, uh, the juveniles or otherwise dead ones. Uh, woolly mammoths, uh, juvenile or uh, dead ones. And of course, uh, Columbia mammoths, uh, which is either the juveniles or the uh, carrion. They would not be going after the adults, uh, Columbia mammoths, woolly mammoths, uh, mastodons, or the ground sloths, because those things are pretty huge. And why go after something that's actually really healthy and can defend itself? So that's why they actually would act prefer to go after the juveniles or otherwise uh, just feed on the carrion of those animals. And so, yeah, so it's a opportunistic predator. The extinction of the American lion, mostly due to climate change. Climate change was happening around 11,000 years ago. Uh, the glaciers were retreating, of course, but there's a possibility, there's a possibility uh, that humans did actually have a part into the extinction of the American lion. Uh, mostly that that uh, humans were hunting the prey that the American lion were actually hunting, and so that that's a possibility, but it's probably more likely a combination of climate change and also human uh, uh, inter humans uh, hunting the prey. And of course, like I said, the glaciers were retreating. You actually have warming, the global warming that was actually happening. So as the uh, climate got warmer, so that means the the plants that all these megafauna that actually relied on was starting to disappear, and then it and some of them actually had to move further north uh, to actually find that type of food source. But sometimes that food source is not, is not really there. And so, and also, of course, you have limited prey sources. And that's the reason why uh, the American lion went extinct is because its prey was starting to disappear. And here's a map of the Earth around 18,000 years ago. So this is getting pretty close to uh, when the American lions and most of the other megafauna were starting to disappear. Uh, as you can see in this map, the glaciers were covering major like almost, almost half of North America, but this is actually probably at least like a third of North America that it was actually covering. So the American lion would actually be living in the areas where there's not that much ice. So you're actually going to be seeing American lions actually roaming around in that type of area right there. And so the next episode, they'll be on September 17th, 2020, and there'll be a Q&A episode. So if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Also go to my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, yes, you post your questions in the comments section, not on Messenger, just in the comments section. And also for YouTubers out there, uh, feel free to like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and also stomp on that notification bell. So that way you can get weekly updates of every single episode I do every week. And also to YouTubers out there, feel free to put the questions in the comments. Put your questions in the comments and I read them all and, uh, and you get note, and you get a, a shout out uh, for your for your question. Remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at C-S-G-A-R-A-L-L. -L. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you. Notice that for younger people out there, to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have a good education. It's very important to have a good education. It's with a good education, you get a good job in the future. Remember, everyone, we're still in the pandemic, so make sure you're being safe, you know, washing your hands, uh, use hand sanitizer at, if possible, and also wear a mask when you're out in public, especially like in a grocery store, a gas station, or otherwise uh, any type of uh, retail store. And also practice social distancing as well, because we all need to try to make sure that we can all get through this together. And also check out Colossal Fossils, and I'll put the link uh, in the description down below of Colossal Fossils' website. That's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time.